Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. Choosing colours for our paint box, especially our watercolour paint box, can be very tricky because you never really know which colours to pick and whether you've picked the right ones. So in this video, I'm going to show you a fairly easy way of how you can choose those colours for yourself. Are you ready? On this channel, you'll find tips and techniques to help to improve your art, so that when you have that knowledge, you can then go and paint whatever you want, whenever you want, without any help from me or from anybody else. Now choosing colours for our watercolour paint box can be a bit difficult because there are so many to choose from. So I was going to make this video about primary colours and secondary colours and how we mix them and that sort of thing. So what I did was I went onto YouTube and I typed in primary colours because I wanted to find out what other people were doing with videos because I didn't want to repeat what they're doing. I wanted to do something different. Now, choosing our colours, um, I'm sure you have seen what we call the colour wheel. Now let's just look down at the desk and we'll have a look. Okay, this is our colour wheel. Now it's a little bit different from the colour wheels that you may have come across because the colour wheels in lots of books have this black line actually going across here so that all the yellows are on one side. Now to me that's not really that logical because there are some yellows that are nearly into the greens. So if you put the line down the middle like this you can have yellows on both sides so you have a warm side and a cool side. Okay, what do we mean by that? Well, the colours on the warm side, think about the colours of fire. You have flames and orange and red and the warm colours. And over here you have the cool colours like um, the, the greenery in the garden. If you've ever touched a leaf in the garden and you'll feel it's cool. You have cool blue shadows like the shadows in the snow. So you've got a cool side and you've got a warm side. In order to pick the colours that we need for our paint boxes, we need to have some colours that when they're mixed up, they will give us a huge range, just like all the colours in this colour wheel. And because reds, blues and yellows are colours that we can't actually make ourselves. Yes, we could take a red and we could add something to it to make a different shade of red. But what we can't do is make the red in the first place. We could take some blue and add something to it to change the actual shade of the blue. But what we can't do is make the blue in the first place. So in our paint boxes, we need to have some of those reds, some of those blues, and some of those yellows, because they are the other colours we can't make. We can make green, so if you don't want to buy a green, you can just mix your own, that's fine. And we can make purple, so if you don't want to buy those, we can mix our own. But we do need to buy reds, blues and yellows. So, okay, which ones do we buy? There are hundreds of them in the shops, hundreds and hundreds of them. And you think, oh my goodness, which ones do I get? Well, if you just have one of each, then you're going to be just a little bit limited to the actual colours you can produce. So let's have two of each. And if you pick two reds that are quite close to each other, well, the mixes you make are not going to be vastly different. So common sense would tell us to pick one red from this end of the reds and one red from this end of the reds. And this is where we get our warms and cools, because the red at this end is nearly into the oranges. And it's got all the warm colours, reds, oranges, 
and into the yellow. It's all warm colours, but over here, the reds are going down into the purples and heading towards the blues, so they're becoming cool. So if we take one red from this end and one red from this end, then we've got a warm and a cool red. And if you look at mine here, this is my warm from this end and this is my cool from this end. And we can do exactly the same thing with the blues. Rather than picking two blues that are close to each other, because our mixes will not be very different, let's have one from the warm end, which is near to the reds, and one from the cool end, which is near to the greens. And here are mine. There's my warm one, and there's my cool one. The same with the yellows. Don't pick two that are close to each other. Pick one from each end. One from the warm end, which is near the reds, there's mine, and one from the cool end that's near the greens. There's mine. Now those six colours are absolutely necessary in our boxes because those colours we cannot make ourselves. So we've got a variety of reds, a variety of blues and a variety of yellows. And that will give us an enormous amount of colours that we can mix with those six colours. Now you could, if you wanted to, add what I call a couple of earth colours, which are browns. You won't find the browns in here, but if you want a couple of browns, then just like this, choose one that's got a warm colour to it, a reddish colour to it, and choose one that's got a cool colour as it's heading towards the sort of greens. So if you want a couple of browns, then that's fine. But these are absolutely necessary for our boxes. That's why I like to keep it very simple. Now that we know that we need two reds, two blues and two yellows in our box to start with, our real foundation colours, I've got a little exercise for you. Now I suggest that you find two blue things in the house, doesn't matter what they are, it can be clothing or an ornament or a picture in a book, doesn't matter what it is, but two blue things. Put them next to each other, sit there and look at them and think, hmm, is that one a warm blue or is that one a cool blue? And then go and get two red things and put those next to each other and say, is that a warm red? Or is that a cool red? And do the same with the yellows. Get two yellow things and say, is that a warm yellow or is that a cool yellow? And it won't be long before you'll be able to look at any colour and say, hmm, that's a warm blue. Or yeah, that's a warm red. Or that's a cool yellow. It'll come very quickly. And then when you go into the art shop and you want to choose your paints, you can look at all these hundreds of blues and you can say, hmm, I need a warm. OK, that's a warm one. And I need a cool. OK, that's a cool one. And you'll be able to do it very quickly. Now, I don't want to give you names of colours to choose because every manufacturer uses different names for colours that are very similar. So don't go by names. Go by your eyes. Look at the colours and choose the ones that you like because we all see colour differently. When we were younger, colours are very bright and vivid. <laughs> when you get to my age, they begin to get a bit more dull and a bit, and a bit faded. A bit like me, really. So, um, it depends on the colours that you like. If I'm looking at a blue on here, and you look at that same blue, you might see it very differently. So giving you names of colours is probably not a good idea. Choose them from your own, from your own eyes, from your own eyesight. The, the warm one that you like and the cool one that you like in each of those three colours. I hope this video has been useful. If it has, please click that little subscribe button and the little bell icon and that'll let you know when I upload a new video. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, there's an artist in everyone. Bye for now.